lipid transfection is the most common, least expensive, and the easiest method to run. Basically, it involves complexing the lipid to the DNA or RNA of interest and then incubating the complex with your cell culture. We're going to discuss this technique in greater detail in a few minutes. Moving down the list, viral methods um, are next. And viral methods are a bit more challenging than lipid transfection. First, the cells you are looking to transfect must have the receptors for the viruses that are being used. Your viral constructs are then generated in packaging cells, then collected from those cultures, and then subsequently added to the cultures of the cells which wish to be transfected. You may have to do various rounds of packaging to get the infectivity of your viral stock high enough that you'll get an efficient transfection. So you can see it's a little, little bit more challenging than the lipid transfection. The next method on the list is electroporation. And electroporation actually involves a device that delivers an electrical pulse to your cells. Uh, the electrical pulse opens pores in the cell membrane, allowing the DNA or RNA to move through the pores into the cell. One of the negative features of this method is high cell mortality post-transfection. So this method is really only used for hardy continuous cell lines that you can grow into large cell numbers. The next method are physical methods. These methods usually involve equipment that are actually used to penetrate the cell membrane. A common example of this is microinjection, which uses a needle to deliver the nucleic acid to the cell. The equipment is very expensive, requires a lot of training, and can also only process one cell at a time. So it's a very laborious process and very limited uh, use in the lab. Another physical method is ballistics, which, as it sounds, involves a device called a gene gun that shoots subcellular particles that are coated with the nucleic acid into the cells. This method, again, uh, the device can be fairly expensive, and this method is generally only used in plant cells, as this is the only method that can penetrate plant cell walls. However, it can be used in mammalian systems, and those systems would be ones where you're looking at non-dividing cell types like neurons, which will become apparent why that's the case in the next slide when I discuss lipid transfection. This device, as I mentioned, is also costly and does require high cell numbers again due to the high mortality post-transfection. There's some other methods that have been developed in the, most, in the last couple of years, uh, but they haven't really gained a lot of common use. One that did actually, ha that is starting to gain some traction in the lab is where you uh, take an nucleic acid and coat it onto metal particles and then use a magnet to pull the particles into the monolayer. As I mentioned, these newer methods have not been around very long, and as such, there aren't very many optimized protocols for different cell types. 